Hello tubers! Tobogganing season is approaching and I thought I better get something done here. Show what's left before it's all gone. September 11th was our first severe frost. It was an early frost. Everything was toasted then. It was like minus 5 at midnight. And it was certainly that cold at like 7 in the morning. So I think our frost date is around the 23rd of September. I decided to use the pepper dome this year. And you can see the peppers are still alive in there. We had a severe frost a couple of nights ago. Winter's fast approaching, so I think I better harvest my peppers and conclude this experiment. Pretty cool to be harvesting fresh peppers in your garden here in central Alberta, October 26th. Anyway, I got a few things left in the garden. I'll, uh, I'll show what's left and uh, maybe what I'll do is I'll talk about some successes and failures I had this year. I got one little cabbage left. This was a side shoot that was growing off of another cabbage. I snapped it off and sputted it back in the dirt. So this is kind of like a bonus cabbage. It's got loose leaves yet. I, uh, I'm going to try and leave it in a little bit longer. We'll see. I might end up harvesting it here tomorrow or something if the weather gets too cold. What we're looking at here is some Brussels sprouts that actually aren't full of holes. I'm a big fan of the cabbage netting. If those of you that have watched some of my videos probably know that I use the netting. That's, that's how I deal with the cabbage moths. This thing here is good enough. I could probably uh, harvest that too. I don't know whether this shows, but you can see that uh, well, I got a few aphids on there. I got some. Uh, I have some Brussels sprouts that I better harvest. I'm going to blanch and freeze these. I'm about the only person in my family that likes Brussels sprouts, so I probably won't plant as many plants. Maybe next year. I'm going to blanch these for three minutes. If anybody's got any comments about that, let me know. These are the hoops that I use for my cabbage dome. It's just half inch uh, conduit. 10 feet lengths. I bought this mesh from Vessi's. It comes in, I think, six foot widths. I, what I did is my mother-in-law was kind enough to bring her sewing machine and I sewed two of them together lengthwise with the 10 foot hoops that, uh, and this 12 foot width. It's just perfect. It works out really nice and it keeps the moths out. Just use the conduit and I pound in two foot lengths of rebar and, and just slip the conduit over the ends of the rebar. And yeah, I'm a big fan of the netting. Those are what Brussels sprouts are supposed to look like. I never had one cabbage moth in there, not one green worm. And another thing I've decided, I used to mulch in my cabbage dome, but I had slug problems. This year the slugs weren't so prolific either, so I, if you can afford to water or you have a source of water uh, readily available, uh, avoid the mulch and it helps keep the slugs at bay. So I got the peppers under the pepper dome, the four Brussels sprouts, the volunteer cabbage. I seeded my garlic, of course. I got to mulch that this week. A couple of leeks left over. First year for leeks for me. I'll be planting those every year. I think they're awesome. They'll tolerate lots of frost. They're easy to grow and they're excellent in soup. I think today I'm going to move my pepper dome and put it over the carrots. I, I have trouble sometimes preserving carrots. I find the best place for me is in the crisper in the fridge. Of course, I don't have that much room in my crisper, so... I've had trouble keeping them in the sand. I've also dehydrated. I still have lots left from last year, so I don't want to dehydrate any this year. I'm going to put the pepper dome over here, fill it with leaves, and uh, hopefully keep it in the garden for another couple weeks, hopefully. And parsnips. I haven't had a parsnip yet this year. There's been too many other things to eat. Got tons of apples off that apple tree and made pies and sauce. So that was a success. Maybe what I'll do, I'll strip that dome off and we'll have a better look at the peppers and I'll harvest them and show everybody what I get. Let's go see what's out front. Everything's been put away here. This is a tomatillo plant. This thing put out like dozens of tomatillos. This is another thing that I'm gonna grow. This is the first time I've grown it this year. Aquarius chick gave me this plant and I've made uh, lots of fresh salsa and I've canned uh, salsa verde. A really sweet plant, a really different plant and uh, quite prolific. It's looking a little nasty. Here's some tomatillos, I better deal with them. You know, if you're a gardener, you know that this time of the year, it's really demanding. I've been working like six days a week and anytime I'm not working, I've been trying to 
uh, ferment or can or freeze and blanch and freeze and and uh, whatnot with the produce. I still got to deal with these tomatillos. This is probably about, I'd say, less than a quarter of what that one plant produced. I've got lots of time to do this. This is another success story. I grew I grew kidney beans this year. And you know what? The frost was early September 11th. So if you want to grow dry beans here in Alberta, that's quite possible. So I'm going to shell those sometime when, when the snow flies. There's three out of the five pumpkins I grew out at my parents. Pretty good considering they didn't really get any artificial watering. I watered maybe a couple times in the summer a little bit when I was out there weeding. This is a pepper plant I got from Stephen Ligari. I made uh, some pickled peppers with that and uh, some salsa. There's still a few peppers hanging off of it. I don't know whether I'm going to bring it in or not. I haven't decided yet. Right now I've been bringing it in and out of the garage. It looks pretty tough shape, but I'd like to see these peppers ripen. Volunteer Swiss chard. I got these are perennial onions from Aquarius Chick. I'm looking forward to having those every year. This is the second year I've grown this. This is Radicchio. I uh, actually just learned the pronunciation of that. I, I got it and uh, thought it would be neat to try. I just ordered it from a seed catalog. and I'm going to try it with some pasta hopefully today. Kale, ultra frost hardy of course. You know, the cabbage moths are finished and I thought the little worms would be finished too with the heavy frost, but you know those little worms will take the heavy frost. So that's why this thing's full of holes. I, I kind of ignored it and I guess I should have picked some worms off of it. Swiss chard, frost hardy. I harvested two thirds of it, blanched it and froze it. I uh, did the frozen harvest last year and that wasn't very appealing so I decided to get some done before winter. And I've got some beets. Tops look pretty tough shape. They're somewhat frost hardy of course but they got crippled up pretty bad there September 11th. And I got one celery plant there. Celery did quite well this year. I was diligent about watering it. So that's it. I got about a dozen things left and and I'm trying to deal with them as best I can. I must admit these peppers look really out of place if you look around the landscape. So I got at least an extra month and a half growing season with that pepper dome. Actually, let me show you that pepper dome. I'm going to I've mentioned it before, but I've never really shown it. I haven't used this heater. I used it one night just so I could... The weather went in the toilet here in the last day. I used this heater once, and that was last night, just to keep the peppers from freezing so that I could harvest them today. Other than that, that pepper dome has been pretty much uh, as I'm going to show it. So it's just a 4x8 skylight. There's uh, two levels of plastic there. So it's got some insulative qualities. I just took landscape fabric here a couple years ago. I think what I'm going to do, with it, and it would really help better, is I'm going to use carpet. Maybe this winter I'm going to tweak this thing a little bit. I'll replace this with carpet, and that'll have more, more insulative value. And of course I've got my carrots and stuff under there now. Hopefully that'll buy me some more time. I don't have time to deal with this today anyways, so maybe next weekend or... I'll leave it in here as long as I can. Maybe I'll break out the tarp again as well. I'm gonna fill this. I'm gonna throw a bunch of leaves in here too. So carpet on the sides, I think. I'm gonna put handles on the ends. The wife and I carry it from the sides, but it'd be nice to carry it from the ends. Really useful thing here. I use it in the in the fall and sometimes in the spring. Anyway, let's see what the final pepper harvest looks like. So there we are. I've gleaned all the peppers off of them. You can see the pepper dome was starting to fail. That one there got hit. Most of them are still good, but they won't be in the morning. I've made tons of pickled peppers. I've frozen peppers. I've used peppers in sauces. Salsa verde, salsa, really good year for peppers. These ones are really nice. These are Hungarian wax peppers. Those are pretty decent size for where I live. 
these green ones I'm gonna use save them they'll be for salsa verde which I'll probably make maybe tomorrow night it never ends really you ever call anybody a pansy or have been called a pansy pansies are pretty tough actually they'll take a lot of frost if anybody knows what these are called let me know these are like my favorite flower they're ultra hardy, they survive drought, they, they're prolific, and the bees just love them. And you know what? Look at the time of the year, and they're just beautiful. What are these things called, everybody? Anyway, aside from the garlic, I'm not planning on gardening here next year. Next year, there's going to be a bit of a change of venue. I've got a garden out front, and I'm also going to garden at my parents' place, but I want to give this a break. My potatoes sucked this year, they got the blight, and uh, I want to give it a break. I got 38 of these spaghetti squash. I've given away about a dozen already. Two plants, pretty prolific those things. And here's where I decided to put the Dale Calder tree, the goji bush. Everybody I've uh, seen with the goji bushes say that they tend to tip over and they need to be staked. So I've chosen to plant it here it's got the lattice there, the fence on the one side, and the shed there, so it's very sheltered from the wind. And it's got a great staking potential, or it's kind of boxed in there, so... I really should mulch it now. The snowflakes are flying. Thanks for watching. Bye, everybody.